Have you ever experienced the constant feeling of being the backup plan rather than the priority in someone's life? That sense where it appears everyone else's needs take precedence, leaving you questioning your significance in their world. Today, we're confronting this head-on. It's not just about feeling valued, it's delving into the art of becoming irresistibly prioritized, transforming into someone naturally cherished and sought after. This journey isn't about changing who you are, but amplifying the incredible individual you already embody. If you've ever felt sidelined or underappreciated, this video is your catalyst for change. By the end of our exploration, you'll grasp a fresh outlook on how to be acknowledged, listened to, and treasured in every relationship. Let go of that invisibility cloak and pick up your pen. Together, we're rewriting your narrative, one powerful rule at a time. Hit subscribe and brace yourself because this is the voyage from being mere background noise to becoming an unforgettable you. Are you ready? Let's embark. Rule 1. The Art of Mystery In the pursuit of becoming someone unforgettable, the initial stride is mastering the art of mystery. Now, when we speak of mystery, it's not about being secretive or concealing your true self. Instead, it's about gradually revealing yourself, akin to a story unfurling chapter by chapter. This approach ignites curiosity and maintains people's intrigue in discovering more about you. Picture this, when encountering someone new, if they divulge everything about themselves immediately, there's little left to unravel later on. However, if they unveil their stories, aspirations and musings gradually, each interaction becomes an opportunity to uncover something fresh and captivating about them. It's this gradual unfolding that keeps our interest alive. The ancient Stoic philosophers comprehended the potency of restraint. Marcus Aurelius, for instance, espoused the virtue of temperance. Mastering the Art of Mystery It's not about revealing everything at once, but rather sharing thoughts and insights thoughtfully and at the appropriate moments. This doesn't imply hiding your true self. Instead, it offers people the chance to gradually comprehend and appreciate the depth of your personality over time. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, once remarked, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. This applies to how we reveal ourselves to others, relish the present moments of interaction without the rush to divulge every future plan, past experience, or deepest thoughts. Let these aspects surface naturally as your relationships evolve. The art of mystery isn't about fabricating a false persona or purposefully being elusive. It's about recognizing the value of your life story and sharing it thoughtfully, much like a skilled storyteller layers their character, experiences and beliefs in a way that entices others to want to delve deeper into your narrative. This approach to interaction generates magnetic allure. People are inherently drawn to those who intrigue them, to those who leave room for curiosity. It's akin to the delight of reading an engrossing book. You're eager to turn the page to uncover what's next. By practicing the art of mystery, you become that captivating book, leaving people eagerly anticipating every new chapter in your story. Rule 2. Display your value. The second principle in becoming a priority in others' lives is showcasing your value. This isn't about bragging or pretending to be someone you're not. It's about illustrating that you are unique and significant, just like everyone else. Your presence in someone's life holds a distinct significance. Consider this. Things easily accessible to us are often taken for granted, but those that are rare, requiring effort to obtain, are valued more. This rule emphasizes displaying yourself as that rare, valuable treasure. It means living your life in a manner that reflects your self-respect and self-value. 
When you do this, others will begin to recognize and respect your worth too. Marcus Aurelius, a wise Stoic philosopher, once stated, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This implies focusing on what you can control, your actions, beliefs and strengths. Understanding your own worth without depending on others for validation naturally enhances your appeal. Seneca also taught us the value of time and how it mirrors our self-worth. He said, it is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. By choosing not to waste your time on individuals who don't appreciate you, you demonstrate the value of your time. This doesn't mean you should. Display your value. Rather than being arrogant or dismissive, deeply engage with those who appreciate and value your time and energy. Additionally, Epictetus, another esteemed Stoic, stressed the significance of self-reliance. We may not control the world, but we have command over our reactions. Concerning relationships, this means refraining from seeking external approval or validation, but finding it intrinsically within yourself. When you embody self-reliance and confidence, people are inclined to perceive you as someone of immense value. Practically, this rule revolves around living with dignity, self-respect and assurance. It's about comprehending your worth and confidently showcasing it in a humble yet resolute manner. By respecting yourself, establishing healthy boundaries and ardently pursuing your goals, you naturally draw the respect and attention of others. They don't see you merely as another individual, but as someone pivotal and worthy of investment. This marks the initiation of becoming a priority in their lives. Rule 3. Cultivate your own happiness. The third principle towards becoming a priority in others' lives involves discovering and crafting your own happiness. This rule holds fundamental significance because when you find happiness within yourself, you naturally radiate greater attractiveness to others. This isn't about feigning happiness, it's authentically discovering what brings joy to your life and actively pursuing it. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher, taught that happiness emanates from within. He stated, The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This implies that your joy isn't contingent upon others. It commences with your own thoughts and attitude towards life. By focusing on positive thoughts and deriving happiness from your own actions and accomplishments, you exude a confidence and contentment that draws people towards you. Seneca also stressed the importance of being content with oneself, asserting that true happiness is self-generated and not reliant on external factors. According to him, genuine happiness involves relishing the present without anxious dependence upon the future. In practical terms, this translates to living in the moment and appreciating life's joys as they arise instead of incessantly seeking happiness from others. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, highlighted the significance of concentrating on what lies within our control. He advised, seek not the good in external things, seek it in yourselves. This serves as a potent reminder that your happiness shouldn't hinge on other people's actions or opinions, but rather on your own values, activities and self-care practices. In real-life application, this rule involves engaging in hobbies and pursuits that you love, spending time with individuals who uplift you, and prioritizing your physical and mental well-being. It's about constructing a life that brings you happiness, irrespective of your relationship status. When you find contentment within yourself and your life, create your own happiness. Rather than seeking from others to fill a void, you share your complete, joyful self with them. This quality holds immense allure, drawing others to want to be part of your life, not because you require them for happiness, but because they are captivated by your innate joy. 
In essence, creating your own happiness involves nurturing a positive mindset, relishing the present, and finding contentment within your own life. This inner happiness naturally emanates outward, making you someone others desire to be around, thereby elevating you to a priority in their lives. Rule 4. Be valuable and allow others to invest in you. The fourth principle in becoming a priority in others' lives revolves around comprehending your worth and permitting others to invest their time and effort in you. This rule acknowledges your value as something rare and unique, not easily obtained without effort. Stoic philosophers such as Epictetus highlighted the gradual creation of great things, applying this notion to relationships, indicating that genuine connections require time, effort and mutual investment. When you allow others to invest their time and energy in you, they begin to value you more as they recognize what you bring into their lives. Marcus Aurelius underscored the importance of self-worth, inner strength and self-respect, affirming that one's perception of themselves significantly influences how others perceive and value them. Seneca also advocated for self-contentment and being valuable to oneself first, suggesting that often our fears regarding others not recognizing our value are unfounded. In practice, this rule entails living a life that mirrors your worth, engaging in activities that enhance your knowledge and skills, tending to your physical, emotional and mental well-being, and constructing a life that you take pride in one that others would seek to be part of. Remember, when people invest their time and effort in you, it forges a deeper connection and renders your relationships more meaningful, allowing them to perceive you not merely as another person in their lives. Be valuable and let others invest in you. In essence, being valuable and allowing others to invest in you is about recognizing your worth engaging in self-improvement and fostering meaningful relationships through mutual effort and respect. This approach positions you as a priority in others' lives, not because you demand it, but because they genuinely value and appreciate you as someone significant and irreplaceable. Rule 5. Live your own life. The fifth guideline for becoming a priority in others' lives is centered on embracing your independence and pursuing your personal interests and aspirations. It entails crafting a fulfilling life for yourself rather than relying on others for happiness or purpose. Marcus Aurelius, the insightful Stoic emperor, once remarked, he who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. This quote encapsulates the essence of this rule. Living in sync with yourself entails recognizing and chasing your dreams, passions and objectives. When content and fulfilled in your own life, you naturally become more appealing to others. They perceive you as someone self-sufficient and complete, drawing them towards you. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, emphasized the importance of self-contentment advocating that our happiness shouldn't solely hinge on our relationships with others. His advice was to love others only after finding love and contentment within yourself. Epictetus stressed focusing on what is within our control, our actions, pursuits and responses to life's challenges. In the context of living your own life, this signifies not excessively tethering your happiness to how others treat or perceive you. Instead, concentrate on constructing a life that brings you joy and satisfaction. Practically, living your own life involves engaging in activities you love, advancing in your career, spending time with uplifting friends and family, setting and pursuing personal goals. When you have a fulfilling life, people naturally desire to be part of it, recognizing you as someone who brings value and joy rather than someone constantly seeking support or validation. In summary, living your own life is about being self-reliant, pursuing your aspirations and finding contentment and happiness within yourself. Live your own life.
Living your own life involves finding happiness in your personal achievements and activities, being content with who you are and what you have. This inner contentment naturally enhances your appeal to others. When you lead a fulfilling life independently, you become a person others naturally want to prioritize and include in their lives. Rule 6. Prioritize your own needs. The sixth rule in making yourself a priority in others' lives emphasizes the crucial role of self-care and self-respect. It's about recognizing that taking care of yourself isn't selfish, it's essential. When you respect and fulfill your own needs, you exude self-assurance and worth, drawing others towards you. Marcus Aurelius, a prominent Stoic philosopher, spoke about the power of self-control and inner strength. His statement emphasizes the importance of focusing on oneself and one's needs. It reminds us that while we can't control how others treat us, we have control over how we treat ourselves. Prioritizing your needs is a means of asserting control over your own life and well-being. Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, stressed self-reliance and independence. He advocated for finding happiness within and not overly depending on others for our sense of worth or contentment. Epictetus, too, highlighted the significance of focusing on what we can control our actions and responses to external circumstances. In practice, prioritizing your own needs involves setting boundaries in relationships, ensuring your needs aren't constantly placed behind others, and making time for personal pursuits, relaxation or growth. It means making choices that contribute to your health and happiness, even if it involves saying no to others at times. In summary, Prioritizing your needs is about understanding and respecting your own worth, taking care of yourself physically and emotionally. When you do this, you not only create a fulfilling life for yourself, but also become a more attractive and respected presence in the lives of others, encouraging them to value you as well. Rule 7. Value your time and presence in communication. This rule advocates for occasionally taking a step back in communication, allowing the other person to take the lead. It's about fostering a balanced relationship where both parties contribute equally. Seneca's teachings echo this sentiment, emphasizing self-reliance and not entirely placing one's happiness in the hands of others. By not always initiating contact, you demonstrate that your happiness and sense of worth aren't solely dependent on the other person. This approach also grants them the opportunity to miss you and reach out, showcasing their appreciation for your presence in their lives. Epictetus spoke about self-discipline and control in actions, stating, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Applied here, it underscores the significance of listening and allowing space in communication rather than constantly filling silences. It's about finding a balance between speaking and listening, initiating and waiting. In practice, this rule involves being mindful of how often you're the one initiating contact. It's about creating a healthy dynamic where both sides feel equally invested without playing games or keeping score. Balancing in initiating communication respects your time and allows others to demonstrate their interest, ensuring a mutually beneficial relationship where both parties are equally engaged. This equilibrium enhances the relationship's fulfillment, making you a priority in each other's lives. Rule 8. Balance in initiating communication. Epic. Tetus emphasized the significance of controlling our reactions, stating, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Applied to emotional balance, this suggests that while we can't control others' behavior in a relationship, we have control over the depth of our emotional involvement. This isn't about being distant, but maintaining a healthy emotional distance while assessing mutual investment and respect in the relationship. Practically, this rule involves being mindful of the pace and intensity of emotional attachment. 
Taking time to understand someone and allowing the relationship to evolve naturally not only shields you from potential distress, but also showcases your self-value and the emotional depth you seek in relationships. Summary. Maintaining emotional balance involves managing emotional investments wisely. It's about allowing relationships to unfold naturally rather than rushing into deep emotional attachments. This balanced approach makes you a more stable and appealing partner, increasing your chances of becoming a priority in someone's life. Rule 9. Maintain Emotional Balance This rule focuses on maintaining a balanced emotional investment in relationships, advocating for a healthy approach where emotions don't entirely dictate interactions. Marcus Aurelius, known for his stoic wisdom, emphasized emotional restraint and rational thinking. He highlighted the importance of responding thoughtfully, not impulsively, in situations, preventing emotional overwhelm or premature attachment in relationships. Seneca also stressed the control of emotions, indicating that unnecessary suffering arises from allowing emotions to govern actions prematurely. This underscores the significance of managing emotions and avoiding hasty, anxiety-driven responses in relationships. It involves giving the relationship adequate time to grow and develop naturally without rushing into emotions. Rule 10. Be willing to walk away. The tenth and final rule emphasizes having the courage to walk away from situations or relationships that don't respect or value you. It's about recognizing your worth and not hesitating to step back from unbeneficial relationships, demonstrating self-respect and ensuring that others treat you as a priority. Marcus Aurelius stressed inner strength and self-respect, noting that true power lies in controlling your mind. This quote underscores the strength to walk away from negative situations stemming from within. While we can't control how others treat us, we can control our response. Seneca highlighted the importance of self-worth, emphasizing that life's quality matters more than mere existence. In relationships, this stresses the significance of quality connections over merely having someone around for company. Epictetus emphasized freedom of choice and personal responsibility, advocating for leaving situations that don't respect your worth. Practically, being willing to walk away involves setting and maintaining boundaries, recognizing when a relationship lacks reciprocity, and having the self-respect to leave rather than settle for less. Summary. Being willing to walk away asserts your value. It's about refusing to accept disrespect or less than you deserve, conveying that you must be valued and prioritized. This rule underscores the affirmation of your self-worth and the understanding that you deserve better. Embrace these rules not just as guidelines, but as affirmations of the incredible person you already are. Every step toward valuing yourself teaches the world how to value you in return. Remember, while today's chapter closes, your journey of growth and self-discovery is an endless adventure. If you found value in what we've shared today, explore more by clicking on the playlist on your screen. Dive in and continue transforming your life into the masterpiece it's meant to be. Thank you for spending this time with me. Keep shining, keep growing, and always remember, in the story of your life, you are and always will be the lead character. See you in the next video.